Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our conversation powered by the Los Angeles Film School. Uh, I'll be your moderator this afternoon. My name is Tabo Wolfart, and I'm a documentary and film instructor here at the school. I have a few of my uh, thesis production students sitting here in the audience. And uh, I know we have a bunch of you watching on the live stream. We've got online students watching as well, so welcome. Um, so um, without further ado, I would like to give a very warm thank you uh, uh, to Yoshio Kohashi. Yeah. Uh, he is an, an alumni from back in 2002 uh, and has had a really incredible career as an e editor, uh, visual effects, ed a visual um, effects editor, visualization editor, compositor. Uh, Yoshi, I, I see that you have a massive body of work in film, documentary, TV, uh, work spanning from Los Angeles to Tokyo. Um, some of the projects that you've worked on are Thor, Love and Thunder, Hawkeye, uh, recently Clarence Clemens, Who Do You Think I Am, Lady and the Tiger, uh, Doing, uh, working on a project with surfing legend Kanoa Igarashi mm -hmm. for Red Bull Chapters, uh, Queen of We mm -hmm. for FIFA, for our soccer fans or football, uh, Tourist, Apocalypto, and there's so many, I, 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 we'd be here for a while if I kept going. Um, but please, everyone, welcome Yoshio. Thank you very much. All right, so, um, Let's just jump right in. And okay. uh, you graduated in 2002. How did you get started with your career? Well, let's see. Well, I was in the school. I get a couple groups who are very serious to making a feature film. So when I graduate, well, before I graduate, I already choose my mind to become editor. And they are looking for the editor who are crazy enough to work student feature film. And that times, I think still now, but uh, editing room is a 24-hour access. So I was uh, always in the dark room and editing something, you know, whatever I can. And I think another cross semester person look at me and, you know, looks like I'm crazy enough to edit the uh, future film. So that's uh, I started. So basically, before I graduate, I already have uh, like a future film editing experience. And from that, I used that career to get into the uh, small post-production house. And for nine years, I become uh, like a house editor. And during that time, uh, the post-production uh, house is uh, focused on the VFX. So I learned that uh, uh, VFX editor skill set and you know how to deal with uh, packaging that uh, assets and you know how to online it. But my heart is always editing that uh, offline editing narratives or documentaries kind of stuff. So when I have chance to get the green card, yeah, I take it and that was crazy process. But you know, somehow I got the green card and I become a freelance and I start doing more crazy stuff like uh, whatever I can do. And now I'm here, I guess. <laughs> so. That's great. I went yeah. through the green card <laughs> process yeah. myself, so I understand. Yeah. So uh, tell us where are you originally from? I'm from the uh, Japan, mm -hmm. and I am from the uh, Hyogo Prefecture. It's next to the uh, Osaka, so it's the uh, west side of Japan, and it's a pretty nice place to hang around. For especially food is good, so I always miss the Japanese food. So. Um. Speaking of food, uh, I want to just, uh, before we get deeper into this, I'd love to just share your reel with our audience okay. online, um, just so they can kind of get a flavor of your work. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Dime dónde está. Three second hand start. Daddy, what are you doing? Daddy, 
Is awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, watching that and and looking at your work, uh, you have a lot of experience, mm -hmm. uh, and you're very skilled at what you do. Um, <laughs> uh, and one of the things that you know I see a lot with students, especially when they're starting out here, mm -hmm. is they're doing their first projects, whether it's uh, directing or cinematography or editing. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have these, you know, ideas of what they want it to look like, and mm. you know, they've got great taste, and um, but then they're frustrated with the outcome. Mm. Like, what advice would you give to them? Well, I think that uh, from my own experience, editing is a mission to tell the story. So it's not about how it looks. Your job is telling the story. So. Um, you have to really focus on, you know, how many people understand the content. So, you know, if director is excited, but if no one can understand why he's excited, editor is a responsibility to translate the director's vision. And also you have to fight with director. It's kind of a, you know, if you have a budget, you can fight with director. If not, then just shut the mouth and edit. But uh, <laughs> otherwise, you know, always, you know, your job is most important thing is telling the story. That's all I care. So first, I don't think I want to make art. Art is maybe some people can judge, oh, this is art. So when people say, oh, you're making art, no, no. I am just figuring out how to tell this story. And from there, you know, you just think about, you know, what really this content or story tells. And you focus it, you will find a way and but that's of course yeah take a time and process. So you know most things you have to do is no matter what just keep doing uh, what you can do. And if you have opportunity to edit, you know just edit for first time. And after that, people will recognize you. Then you can charge whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, I, I like what you just said yeah. there. Keep doing it. Um, how long did it take, you know, from you know, your first day of being a film student to getting to a point where you thought, okay, I'm an editor, I know how to do this? Well, I never think that kind of feeling till <laughs> you guys call me here and, oh my God, that I have something <laughs> I can show people. <laughs> but, you know, but from beginning, I always have this kind of passion that uh, I have to tell something to the uh, people, like, you know, when I was in Japan, even I was walking the street, 
I feel like there is a corner in the sky. So I always feel like a box in. And I was struggle with, you know, what I really want to do. And I think about, you know, a couple of years and, you know, I end up as, okay, I think I want to tell the story. And that's the moment I found some kind of a confidence in myself. And so that is my kind of a driven to now. So I don't know that the, when I realized, okay, I have these things in me, but from beginning, I was very hungry with, I have to tell something. So if you are struggling with it, yeah, just focus on, you know, re what you really wanted to do in your life. And luckily, editing really fits my, you know, scene to telling the story. So, and I, it was amazed that, you know, how other people, especially, like, you know, you're gonna share few, uh, fast witness of the director's mind and you're gonna digest that and tell the story. So for me, yeah, this is a kind of my dream job. I, when I realize, you know, I have uh, some skill to tell. So just keep, for me, they just keep, uh, um, I don't know, it's up to you guys, but for me, yeah, editing is things I can do whatever it takes. And I never think other way. So um, maybe you have uh, some stuff you can think like that. So just find that core passion then, you know, I think now that passion will set the way to where you want to go. So yeah, the word I keep hearing is story and yeah. storyteller yeah. and uh, passion, uh, you know, and we talk about this with the film students mm -hmm. all this. So now you all know I'm not lying that we're not lying to you. Yeah. It's, it all comes down to the story and the storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, so what made you decide to come to Los Angeles Film School? So that's the same thing what I said. Um, Japan has a very, you know, artistic expression, but uh, more like a Japanese movie that time. I don't know right now, but it's more like they go for the art. So if 100 people exist, maybe four or five people understand. But my passion is, if there's a hundred people, I want to tell the story for 95 people, not the five people. And that is a kind of a Hollywood entertainment. It's really stick on my mind. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, yeah, if I want to do my editing or like filmmaking, I want to learn that uh, Hollywood style. Mm -hmm. And that's why I came to the United States and I find every film school and I spent two years there and yeah, graduate. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about being in school and uh, really working on a lot of projects, mm -hmm. editing just all the time. Um, what would be your key takeaways from film school? What were the most valuable lessons you learned? Most valuable lesson? Um, well, I think, you know, I think it's more like a culture stuff, but here, there's no like uh, rules to, again, it's back to tell the story. In Japan, they have lots of custom. Oh, you cannot do that. You, you know, try to be that way, this way. But in here, as long as you're gonna tell the story, there's no rules, especially, you know, editing or like a, making a story, not, you know, killing the people. Or, that, that, that's always bad, but <laughs> in the movie, I can do anything I want if director agree with us or like the as visions are. So that kind of, you know, out of the uh, culture stuff, you know, it's a free expression and everybody ad admire or like uh, encourage to do, you know, whatever you can just do it and tell the story. And that's, I learned from this school and that's really gave me a permission to, okay, I can be who I am. And, you know, that's really, I got from this school. So I think I got some kind of permission to be free. <laughs> That's great. Um, what, uh, how do you, would you say your relationships factored in, you know, in film school, um, just with your fellow students? Well, you know, I think in the beginning, we are very, you know, tight, same vision and, you know, but I know, you know, film industry is a very hard industry, so, End up is, you know, I still hang out with, you know, all classmates, two or three people, but other people, you know, kind of falling off from the 
film industry. So that's harsh moment. But you know, as I said, back to the, my vision, always I was you know looking for this passion of telling the story, and that's really me to stick on this industry. And you know, most of the people who I talk to now with the classmate has same kind of a core passion about. Maybe you know it's not about you know editing, but they have a this kind of strong passion to entertain people and you know makes people happy. And that person, you know, kind kind of you know get together still. And yeah, but yeah, most of the my schoolmate is kind of you know disappear. So mm -hmm. especially as a COVID, you know, we lose lots of you know connection between mm -hmm. each other. So you know, I know you know. Life is always going unexpected way, mm -hmm. but you know I think that's a life. And so, is that I answer your question? I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. Um, uh, my experience in film school, you know, the the relationships were very valuable in mm -hmm. learning from each other. Mm -hmm. um, and I still have some very close relationships, you know, all these many mm -hmm. years later. But yeah, you you people fall off. But yeah. There's still a few I mean, core. I think I'm a little bit different way, but I am kind of editor, and you know, it's kind of stuck in a small room, uh -huh. and you never know when is that daytime or nighttime. So when you're gonna start doing that, you know, you lose that, uh, you know, <laughs> time. And I just realized, oh, I spent 20 years in the United States, and I'm kind of freaking out right now. To <laughs> oh my god, you know. So mainly, yeah, I think that's kind of you know. I think I think you should aware how time passed quickly. So I really yeah recommend if you have a great classmate next to you, you should be together and definitely these those people are helping you to bring up the next level. And it's good to have a friend in here, and especially yeah, film school, that's one of the benefit. Yeah, yeah. I, I have some thesis students in here. Uh, they were shooting this weekend. Uh, one of our students, Jake Boyle, was directing. Um, mm -hmm. And I stopped by on set uh, on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And it, just how they were working together mm -hmm. and, and the relationships that they're forming, it's encouraging. And I, mm -hmm. I've seen through the years a lot of uh, alumni that I mm -hmm. taught where the, you know when they form these close mm -hmm. bonds in school, they often help each other mm -hmm. um, out in the industry. Um, so I'm very curious uh, about your work because, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, you have these credits on these some of these major blockbuster, mm -hmm. you know, uh, visual effects editing mm -hmm. on Thor, Love, mm -hmm. and, Love and Thunder. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've done some uh, beautiful documentaries. You've done work here. You've done work in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious, like, how do you find your work? Um, especially such diverse work? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, obviously, it's kind of a hard question. I, well, it's kind of, if you work, you know, hmm, it's kind of hard to explain, you know, because it's against mm -hmm. so much uh, opportunity. And for me, yeah, I don't want to miss that any opportunity. So, you know, luckily, you know, I think it's come back to the how much I dedicate my work to, as an editor, and I show them, like a, such as Demorio, and I try to prove that you know I can do anything I want, and that is my confidence. And if I show in the right way, people will, you know, react. And I know sometimes when you edit, okay, this doesn't go nowhere. But I kind of that time I was a little bit panicked, but I just calm myself to calm down, okay, it will happen somewhere, this will help me. And I trust the process. So when you, I think you basically, always you have to talk with yourself and one guy is very negative and one guy is very positive. So I think that the key is how to beat this negative Yoshio and make it as a positive way of thinking. So uh, positive way of thinking is very important in this industry, especially, you know, Nobody can, you know, understand who you are because only you know who you are. So you have to really practice yourself to, you know, I'm okay and I'm great. <laughs> and, you know, just don't worry about 
bad stuff. You know, I mean, yeah, you should worry, but but technically you can forget about it and you know just see as a bright side. And you know, when you start seeing the bad stuff, then that might be your your time. But luckily, I try to. I'm still convinced myself I'm okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, that that seems to be at a, the heart of uh, storytellers mm -hmm. and creators mm -hmm. is that those two opposing voices, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have to listen to the one that tells you to keep going and yeah. that you're good. Um, uh, can you tell us uh, for our students and and the audience out there um, what is the difference between like working as an editor, mm -hmm. working as a visual effects editor? Mm -hmm. Um, so compositor. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that uh, more like a visual effect editor is a more like a systematic. And uh, already, you know, there is vision. Already, you know, there is a vision, and more director has a strong mindset. So, as editor, you know, we are visual effect editor is more like organizing stuff. So more like you are asking the skill set how to put all that uh, materials in which bin or which folder. So more you have to understand in that all that uh, drive structure and asset. So you are more like, uh, you know, clean up that uh, floor, something like, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's really helped me to calm down yourself. So I really like to do both. So sometimes, you know, I really enjoy that uh, uh, arts of organization and, you know, some people ask, oh, where that asset goes? And I can say immediately, okay, that is there, there. So that is kind of uh, helping me when I edit uh, more like a documentary or like a more uh, freestyle stuff. So difference between, you know, visual effect and uh, just normal editing is uh, more like, you know, visual effect editing has s strict rules. And definitely you have to obey the rules, you know. That's how the company or like a structure works. But other hands, you know, uh, document editing, you can do anything you want to as long as you can tell the story. So, you know, both is important in this industry. So, you know, and that's really helped me to, you know, train myself to be professional. And professional can be both, you know. So, and don't under, don't look down each, you know, both has a very, you know, respective work order and you know you have to I think I recommend most of it I should run lots of you know this kind of you know both uh, structure so really understanding all of the building blocks yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so can you describe or explain to us um, how do you prepare for a job so not when you get a job um, especially knowing that you work you know a narrative and documentary mm -hmm. Uh, how are they different approaches? Is it the same? Well, it's kind of tough. In the beginning, I was really scared to put the fast cut because always I was stuck in that uh, how I start from this one shot to next. So in the beginning, yeah, you know, before I edit, I kind of start thinking about myself, how you make a story before I edit. So, you know, make sure, you know, think, hundred times or something and I start adding the fast edit and you know slowly slowly I edit second cut third cut but once you go on that process probably you know you got used to it and you know now you know now these days I don't have so much scary moments you know how to edit mm -hmm. but process is yeah you know I think most of the time I feel like, you know, you already had, you already know the story before you edit. So basically, editing is just, you know, visualize what you are in the head. So, you know, usually we talk director in the beginning or like producer and understand what the story about. And once you show the first shot, you kind of start understanding how this goes until, you know, they have a hiccup. And and that time you discover, okay, this is not how I saw. Then that time I start over and do again. So editing is yeah, kind of repeating process. But but mainly, yeah, most of the time I imagine everything before I edit. It kind of hard to say imagine everything, but 
I have some kind of a vision before I edit, and I just follow that, you know, emotional vision, and I start, you know, making a sequence, and that's how I make a, uh, you know, documentary or yeah, special documentary. Um, so when you're doing narrative editing, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're working off a script, mm -hmm. you're working off uh, whatever dailies mm -hmm. they, they manage to shoot mm -hmm. in production. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so you're cutting that documentary, you know, you're, yeah. you're dealing usually with mm -hmm. a lot of footage. Mm -hmm. Um, what are, what are the different challenges in each? For, or yeah, for narratives, I really try to understand that the individual character's, uh, emotional, uh, state or, or who he is. So when I see the dailies or, you know, takes, I really focus that, uh, this emotion really fits to the character. So, you know, sometimes, you know, actor get tired and he, they lose that uh, moment, then, you know, obviously that is not the right, you know, take. But sometimes you can't get the right emotion, right? Because, you know, actor is a human being and then sometimes they're out of character. So in that times, you know, I really see as a big picture and as a storyline, you know, how to build him as a, if he's an evil character, then you know, how I build him as an evil character in 20 minutes. So even you know he has a bad acting, there's a way to hide that bad character acting. So you know that happens often, but mainly, but because I can understand that is I really focus on the individual character's emotion and uh, you know uh, action. So that's really you know, save the story and director usually appreciate that kind of attitude from me and that's how I switch my mind. Because documentaries, you know, you never know what will happen, you know. Sometimes character that the main protagonist says stupid things or crazy stuff and if that's not fit into the uh, story, you know, you have a little bit big trouble, but you know, that time you, know, you might have to change the storyline. But narrative, you know, you don't have that kind of worry. So I just can focus on the character's, you know, emotional mindset, how it goes. And that's the kind of big difference between, you know, how I change that uh, editing style. Mm -hmm. So so narrative really focusing on the character's emotional yeah, arc. arc. Um, so and so, how do you deal like with documentary? You know, I saw the FIFA and the Red Bull, and mm -hmm. uh, I imagine they give you a lot of footage. You have the conversation with the director mm -hmm. about their vision, mm -hmm. um, but how do you find the story? Well, obviously, director and I should talk a little bit uh, in the beginning, and you know, director has always intention. Well, especially that kind of FIFA documentary is more like a how do you say, corporate organization video. So there's a strong theme that exists before. It's not like, you know, we're looking for the, uh, right, you know, crazy moment or, you know, we already had this idea of concept. So director is kind of focusing on how to grab that moment. So, you know, we both know what kind of essence we're looking for from this chat. So it's very easy for us to, you know, as long as the director, because director doesn't, should anything, something off from the his vision, right? Mm -hmm. So because of the, it's a FIFA and it's already have this thing. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's kind of more easier to edit than another like a lifetime documentary. So, but especially yeah, we need to really communicate with director and you know understand what director is looking for. And my job is I can emphasizing what he's seeing and translate that vision to the uh, people, like uh, as I said, 95 people to understand. Sometimes director has a so tight vision. Mm -hmm. Some people doesn't understand why this is so great or exciting. So that time, you know, editor's job is understanding that uh, what's director's vision and passion. And we try to make that, you know, it, so basically translate the director's vision. And that is a kind of yeah, fun process to, you know, understand. Also, people have a different mindset, you know. So. Yeah, and uh, you do a 
all the hard work to make the director look good. <laughs> well, sometimes people say that, but you know, once you did it, you know, it kind of you know, takes as credit. So yeah. I just say, okay, that's great. Um, so it's uh, interesting to uh, hear how working with like big brands like Red mm -hmm. Bull or mm -hmm. FIFA, that kind of corporate structure and the, mm -hmm. the themes that they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Um, that that kind of helps you figure out how to approach the, mm -hmm. the cutting and the storytelling. Um, so it, with a documentary like the Clarence Clemens, mm -hmm. um, you know, which would, how is the approach different well, there? How, how do you find the well, story in that? Unfortunately, that, unfortunately, that is a little bit totally different process because we are talking about, yeah, our subject of, of course, Cremons, but director has a very strong are thought about him. So we are telling about his story, but you realize it's not about him. It's about director's vision. So it's very interesting that uh, we discover that, you know, how more like, you know, how director see him. So it's not, well, we use him as a main character, but during the process, I understand this is not about him. This is the story about director give a love letter to him. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's really different idea what I s first I thought. It's about, you know, his life story. But during, you know, I was working with director. No, no, this is about he miss the Cremons. And because the director is really close to him and he's a best friend of lifetime and he missed so much. So. You know, in the beginning, yeah, I was a little bit and couldn't understand why you make this scene important for him. But during the process, yeah, just I understand. So most of like a documentary I work, it's about who going who is creating this documentary. So you know, maybe the Cremont is not that like a documentary person. He might be has uh, so many different character, but. We have only a two hours or 90 minutes, and we have to tell the story. And and that time I really discovered that, okay, this is not about him. This is about director is giving the Cremons uh, his salt and love letter. So once that moment I discovered, it was more like, you know, I understand how to edit this story. And so I don't know you watch all of it, but it's more like a, feel like a collaborator mm -hmm. to him. So I don't know that's good for audience, but you know, it's mm -hmm. really touched the director's heart. So mm -hmm. sometimes, yeah, when you work with a documentary, there's a very special, unique documentary. Not so many, like, unfortunately, I make like a, sometimes five people documentary, <laughs> but that happens. But as long as, you know, I have a skill to tell somebody, and tell the story, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, and that was a very great experience I had with him. So uh, you talk a lot about that close collaboration with the director, mm -hmm. uh, you know, essentially your storytellers in different um, stages mm -hmm. of the story. Uh, can you think of any uh, moments where the director had an idea, and, but you'd cut something mm -hmm. in a different way that surprised them? Yeah, yeah. there's a, I mean, but still, you have to collaborate with Texas vision. So basically, how I said, you know, like if you have a, like a flower, flower has a different stage of beauty, right? Mm -hmm. But like example, some people enjoy that the flower is growing, the growth of beauty. And some t people enjoy that the flower is dying. So, but we always talking about flower. So as long as you are, Telling about the beauty of a flower, director or producer are gonna understand because his main object is telling that uh, beauty of a flower. Mm. So, so sometimes you know directors think, okay, I wanna express that uh, beauty of flower growing, but I say no, 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 that doesn't work in this storyline. You have to tell that uh, flower is, you know, dying or something. In that case, you know, we at least we have a common knowledge. We're talking about flower. So people, I can't, I don't want to convince, but I can surprise the director. Oh, that's how you see this subject. So, so if you talking about some weird stuff, then, you know, we can't convince, you know, 
director, you know. So that's how I gonna, if I gonna surprise that uh, directors with my edit, I have to focus what subject we're talking about, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's kind of hard to say if you're talking about poop, not so many people understand why poop is beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, you, you don't have any common sense. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you're using the flower as a main object, mm -hmm. people understand no matter which country you are, flower is beautiful. So you have this common sense of the knowledge. So that's how I see my edit if I'm going to surprise. So I never edit poop. <laughs> 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 that might be a first in our live streams. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I, I don't know how to explain whether yeah. my words. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, one of my favorite things working with editors mm. is the being surprised and mm. kind of awed sometimes, mm. you know, by seeing an edit and just seeing something that I, I didn't even see was mm. there. Well, if that said, you know, I really don't like the word called perfect mm -hmm. because perfect is stop the process right there. So I always say that, you know, you know, if you're gonna realize your back, you have to feel like itchiness, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have an itchiness, you don't know where your back is. You know, perfect back, nobody cares, right? So sure. if you have an itchy, oh, you scratch and you feel like oh, I have a back. So I'm always looking for that moment in editing too. So some people say, oh, perfect, okay, I have to find some kind of itchy part and, you know, make that bring up to the story. Then, you know, that uh, kind of register and we can develop the story beyond the perfect. And so that's how I challenge. If, again, if you have a budget and time, I'm gonna do that. If mm -hmm. not, then I just shut the mouse and, okay, <laughs> okay that's it. <laughs> uh, that's a great m metaphor yeah. with the back. I'm gonna remember that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, having worked on so many projects, what would you say is the most impactful project you've worked on, or, or uh, what projects ha had the most impact on you? For me, is uh, uh, I worked for the uh, sci-fi narrative called Beyond the White Space. Mm -hmm. That's really enjoy. Okay, I really feel like uh, I, you know, I have fun time because it's a sci-fi, everybody likes sci-fi. Well, I mean, I'm not sure, but I like sci-fi. And, you know, and that's really, well, actually, that's helps me to get uh, work for the uh, Love and Thunder, because I work from the uh, storyboard editing, animatic, previous, and I did offline, and I did online editing as well. Not color correction, but I did all the process from beginning to end, and that's really, helps my, you know, knowledge. So from that experience, I have very confidence no matter what kind of job I get it as an editor, you know, I'm, I can work, you know, and with very confidence. So. That's, re that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, trends are always changing, mm -hmm. uh, but good story is a good story. Mm -hmm. um, how do current trends uh, influence your work? Well, still, you know, it's hard to tell, but, you know, because it's keep changing, and especially after the COVID, you know. Nowadays, you know, I can work big project or small project at my house. So, you know, it's kind of really, really bad for your mindset. So I went to like a car office. So there's a lot of people around me and that's, feel like, you know, I'm with people. So usually I work, if project is not secret, I go to the uh, call office and work there. And, you know, I just feel like a people existence around me. <laughs> and that's really helped me. And then, you know, you can make a friend a little bit. So, and that's kind of helping me for my normal life. Mm -hmm. But other than that, yeah, you know, AI is kind of taking care of lots of, you know, our work as well. So that's really, I'm pay attention. And lately I worked for the teaser and you know, I couldn't find the right contents from making a YouTube. Uh, I don't have any right contents to use it for teaser. So I have to use kind of, you know, mid journey or AI to, you know, type the words that producer and data wants the image and I make it and I use that as a teaser. So if you're using it the right way, still I think, you know, this AI things works 
but also, yeah, you have to be careful how to use it, you know. So you have to aware of the, you know, trend, and definitely, yeah, you have to be careful what, I mean, I mean, editing is still human being stuff, but, you know, when you see this technology, maybe someday, you know, editing is also take over by AI, so you gotta figure out what to do next. <laughs> Yeah, I was actually yeah. about to ask you because you yeah. brought up the AI question, and people are talking about how that could take over, um, you know, mm -hmm. creative, mm -hmm. intellectual jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, anything from writing to mm -hmm. editing. Mm -hmm. um, do you see that as a threat, or do you see it as a tool? Or? I think still I see it as a tool, and you know, once you again, this is. A, I just I talk positive side. Don't be negative, Yoshi. You know, <laughs> just be look as positive, and you know. But maybe I don't know in my lifetime, but the time will become. I guess in that times, you know, I think all that the world situation is changed. So maybe they don't need to move anymore. Maybe they just understand the story just like that. You know, so maybe you know there's a new entertainment exists. You never know. But I don't think I have to worry about that stuff because I'm here right now and I still have a job. <laughs> so just do whatever you can do and, you know, make it happen. And I think there's a way to, you know, overcome as long as you have a passion. And that's I convince, try to convince myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we don't know, yeah. right? Yeah, but I don't think that doesn't afraid you to make a movie, you know. Mm -hmm. You have always, you know, passion. And, you know, maybe you can make a movie yourself. You know, you don't need an editor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... So it might become a director, maybe. Yeah. So that might be a fun thing, too, I guess. Um, I saw some uh, pictures mm -hmm. uh, where you're, because uh, you, you sometimes work at home, mm -hmm. you sometimes go to uh, the, the co-working mm -hmm. space, mm -hmm. um, and, but I've also seen you editing on location. Yes. Um, what, how does that impact the work? Like, what, how does it make things different? Well, to be true, it doesn't make anything better and bad. <laughs> it just director feel like insurance, you know. Mm -hmm. She wanted to see that the contents as soon as possible. So usually that happens um, when they are worried about, you know, the scene. So every time they hi ask me to, okay, well, no, no, maybe commercial is benefit. The commercial is very fast moving uh, setup. So, you know, it's beneficial to show the editing on set, but one time I work in a future film on set editor, it's not so much fun. <laughs> you know, every time, you know, you see that uh, problems, already they move to the next setup. So I get more frustrated, you know, and I just keep yelling at the director, you know, no, 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 this is not working, but you know, okay, we should pick up, don't worry about it, then why I'm here, you know? So, and sometimes they are so excited, so they forgot my existence. And one time they just left me on the set. It's an independent film, so you know, till film is done, I have to wait for the crew to pick me up. So what do you mean they forgot you? So basically, there's a dinner time. Mm -hmm. They totally forgot because I was in uh, out of the uh, cabin, and they just make a, like a delicate place. Oh, editor must be working a quiet place. So and they forget me. <laughs> so, oh and it was kind of cold time, so they give me like a small generator. But when at night time it's so cold, so if you turn on the heater, generator gonna disappear, uh, generator electricity is gone. But if I don't put the uh, heater, I can edit. So I have an option to be warm or I have to edit. So I have always, you know, turn on the heater, five minutes, turn off and turn on that editing machine and edit. So that's a kind of a very sad experience in my onset editing experience. <laughs> yeah, that sounds yeah. pretty dire. Um, I can't believe they forgot yeah. you. But that's independent movie, so <laughs> <laughs> that happens sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, editing, you have the technical uh, aspect, you know, setting up for a job, the, mm -hmm. you know, organizing. Uh, and then, of course, the creative aspect of, you know, finding performance or finding story. Uh, you know, thinking back, what do you think has been one of the biggest creative challenges that you've faced? Well, creative challenge. 
Well, I mean, I think always creative challenge happens in documentary. It's really, I have option, you know, should I go for this, you know, story or, you know, always there's some breakaway point, you know, and that's really changed the course of the, you know, story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once that happens, you know, I have a really conflict between, you know, really I have an obligation, like a, I should can do that kind of stuff because it's a people's life. Documentary is about, you know, human people's life and mm -hmm. I am changing because I see something they don't see it. And that really scares me. And, you know, sometimes that makes some people bad and some people good people, but tell the truth, both are good people. But when you're gonna tell the story, what director wants it or the situation wants it, you have to make somebody sometimes not so much present person. And that times I have a, like a little bit dilemma, you know, really, you know, I can do that or not, but in the end, you know, mm -hmm. I follow the passion and, you know, make a story. Mm -hmm. But always that stay a little bit, you know, feel bad. Mm -hmm. And especially uh, Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. I have opportunity to work short uh, documentary about that. But unfortunately, I understand that both sides has a good reason to complain that moment. But, you know, I have to pick the side that time because that is the theme of the, you know, director's vision. But that mm -hmm. time I was a little bit, you know, had a own conflict, what should I do? But I'm a editor, so, you know, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, but that's the part I have to really follow the director's mm -hmm. vision. And maybe that's helping me because that means I can take off my guilt, <laughs> <laughs> but still, so, yeah, I see that uh, each side has a human being, fresh blood. Mm -hmm. So that's always give me a hard feeling, you know. In the end, you know, yeah, telling the uh, movie is sometimes is a dangerous weapon to make some people. Yeah. And so we have to be careful with that kind of stuff, too. Yeah, really thinking about the ethical yeah. um, concerns mm -hmm. in, in creating documentary. Um, and I guess why there's always factions arguing, you know, mm. the, the cinema verite filmmakers and the Herzogs. Mm. And so that's why I think I'm more like a, like a narrative myself uh -huh. because it's a script. Yeah. And always bad person is bad person, but I don't have to worry about, I don't have to feel bad for his bad, you know, because it's a story. So, yeah. yeah but sometimes, yeah, that's really give me a, a you know, my therapy, you know, to work in narrative sometimes. So... Yeah. Oh, great. So we have a question from an online student. Is that okay to ask you? Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully you can hear me. I'll repeat it. Okay. It says, editors have offered different tools on when to make a cut, like on the blink of breath, on the, on the blink or breath patterns of the characters or even the music beat. Mm -hmm. Is there a rhythm you use to cut or is it more intuitive? Um, so just to repeat the question uh, as well as I can remember it, um, is there a rhythm in how you're cutting and do you focus on the character's breath or a beat or mu uh, music? Yeah. Well, I practiced uh, martial arts when I was a uh, uh, junior high school to college. So like uh, mm. 10 years, I played like a Japanese kendo. And the kendo has a moments of beat, the, how the oppo oppo opponent gonna attack me. So that's also, you have to be very careful that the eye move or you know how the shoulder move or everything. So I do have some kind of a beat that the how to, like especially fight scene, I have a some certain, you know, reason based on my experience of martial arts. But however, you know, movies sometimes talking about two years story to the uh, two hours. So you can use a real time timing. So that's probably you have to practice as an editor to understand that the, what the cinematic timings are. So of course you can use lifetime experience of your moment sometimes, but yeah, you have to use a cinematic 
timing and that that yeah we use brink or like a music beat and especially music beat really helps to shrink that uh, moment because the music will explain that the tension so we don't have to use a real time tension to establish but if you move, use more music you lose that uh, tension so you know that's probably experience but i think for me most of you can most people can edit that kind of stuff if you take a time what's the difference between them and editor is editor can find that moment quicker than other people mm -hmm. so um, if you want to be a master that kind of a timing yeah just keep editing but if you don't have a you don't want to be editor but you want to make a great mm -hmm. piece then take a time and you know make it happen so that's is my question I can answer with that um, I think that's my opinion so I'm yeah <laughs> yeah thank you yeah um, uh, actually you know I was thinking we our thesis students here um, Jake and Trevor they were shooting a uh, action a lot of action mm -hmm. sequences mm -hmm. over the weekend mm -hmm. uh, a big fight mm -hmm. uh, they had stunt choreographers mm -hmm. Um, obviously, they're going to go into post soon. Mm -hmm. What's and I, I saw you, you've done some really amazing mm -hmm. um, action editing. Mm -hmm. How do you approach that? Well, I mean, you, you should talk about choreographer and how you got to stage the fight scene. But as an editing technique, I put some like a speed change a little bit when you hit it. So when you hit the knuckle, usually you speed up a little bit faster than you cut a couple frame off when you hit, then that's give a very snappy impact. Well, there's a couple tricks, and probably you can check on YouTube too, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's an action sequence, you know, you play with the speed change it. And I think you see that one of the uh, real, the fight scene, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a, sometimes, yeah, I use a speed change it and, you know, make it a little more snappier and, but that's more like an editing technique, but mainly most important things is to talk with a choreographer and how to hide that uh, impact moment with the opponent. And that's really give you a you know, realistic moment and shoot with vertical, so mm -hmm. you don't have to see that. Uh, so, you know, just talk with director, no, sorry, uh, DP and choreographer, and you know, once you did it, then it doesn't work, then yeah, you can fix and edit, I guess. <laughs> but but speed changes, don't forget to use speed change. And that's really, uh, you know, again, you don't have to, well, people will see as a realistic, but, you know, always there's a trick. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to use a cinematic timing. And if you use a real timing, then sometimes that your cut is going to be boring. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid to use special effect or speed change. And some people, oh, it's not real, but. Wait, are you saying speed change? Yeah, speed change, yes. Okay. Sorry. So don't be afraid to use that. As long as it looks nice, mm -hmm. nobody gonna. So basically, the the timing in cinematic mm -hmm. universe is different. Yes. And you have to th put that hat on and kind yeah. of forget what we see in real life. Yes. So if you're gonna, yeah, make a real life. Sometimes, yeah, mm -hmm. it slow down that scene. Mm -hmm. And story is not about fight. What you get from fight. Well, something like you have to think about fighting is a tool to tell the story. It's mm -hmm. fighting is not the main uh, story. It's more than fight. What, so, you know, if fight is the main story, then I think that the story doesn't make any fun. Well, maybe say, oh, it's cool, story mm -hmm. fight, fighting scene, but it doesn't satisfy the audience, you know, so what, what they fight for. So mm -hmm. as long as you are clear that main character, what he's fighting for, then, you know, people will, you know, forgive you even that the fight is a little bit chappy. Mm -hmm. It's fine because they are exciting about what he tried to get from this fight or what he lose from this fight. And that's a more exciting moment for as an editor. And, you know, so, but it's good to have a cool fighting scene. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, the, what we saw earlier on looks super cool. Um, do, do you all have any questions while we're on the sub subject? You're good? All right. I bet you'll have some next month. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So uh, do we have any online questions right now? No. OK. So you know, movie business isn't easy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, whether it's movies or clients or you know TV or corporate, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of rejection, mm -hmm. a lot of no's. Uh, how have you dealt with it, and what advice do you have for our students out there dealing with re rejection? Well, you sh well, I cry. Sometimes I cry. <laughs> well, I can't get this job, but you know. There's plenty of fish in the sea, I guess. So you have to just, you know, move on. Don't be stubborn. You know, if you are feel disappointment, yeah, be disappointed for a while, and just move on. But without disappointment, you will never growing up. You know, always you have this kind of, you know, motive to, you know, okay, I will convince. So every time I get reject, yeah, I will, you know, bring back something new. So that's why I make these reels because when I show my early stage of reels, in like I have a, some gig for Apple. Mm -hmm. Apple said, "Okay, I want to see your reels," and I just show that I just put the famous people, beautiful women on the sh scene, and I make a reel, and they say, "It's not my, our style," so I cannot, you know, you cannot get the job, and that gave me a shock. Okay, how I convince these people, I'm good at what I'm do, and. Okay, then, you know, usually it's hard to express that editor's vision because, you know, director has a unique vision, but editor, do you think I should show this kind of a unique character because editor is more like a tell the story and don't put your character, but I changed my mind, okay, but I can express different, you know, emotion from the something I edit, so I, change my mind and I try to make some like arc. Sometimes you can do a quiet scene or exciting or, so basically yeah, I made a kind of style and after that, yeah, you know, people like my reels and you know, I uh, getting a little bit more good, you know, reaction from the client. That's uh, some really great advice because uh, myself and, and the students are often asking, you know, how do I make a good reel? Mm -hmm. So, uh, listening to your approach, you know, finding an arc in there. Mm. Um, uh, I think that's and really interesting. I think that uh, in the end, if you can tell the story in three minutes, mm -hmm. that's editing rules. Mm -hmm. So maybe director has a more like strong passion piece or moment, but editor job, as I say, telling the story as a big picture. Mm -hmm. So when I edit that reel, I more see as a three minutes piece to, you know, how to make a story from A to Z. Mm -hmm. And for now, I think I am succeed a little bit, I guess. <laughs> but I, yeah, I have to keep edit and you know improve my edit. See, even, you know, I've been 15 or 18 years in yeah. this business, but I need more practice and keep going, I guess. Wow. Um, so, uh, 18 years and you still feel like you need to practice. Well, again, yeah, I was surprised you invite you guys invite me here. <laughs> Other than that, I just me, and you know, <laughs> I think I'm so intimidated this big. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, but I'm thank you. You know, I'm honored to come here, and uh, I always love the area film school, and uh, I finally, you know, I come back and you know, if I'm happy that I can contribute something to this student, and you know, hopefully you get something from my mistake or <laughs> success, I don't know. I don't know, I'm, I'm, what I'm, I'm seeing a lot of success. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, how are we on time? I think, I think we're good to wrap up. Wrap it up. All right, great. Um, well, I really want to thank you for coming well, here. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's a um, very great experience for me to see all the people. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's uh, just, yeah, hearing from you, hearing from your experience, mm -hmm. um, your journey, uh, really what's come across clearly here is th the core of who you are and what you do is mm -hmm. storytelling. Yeah. Um, and your passion that's, you know, keeps driving you. Um, so thank you so much uh, for being here. Yeah, thank you and, so much. And um, to those of you who are watching, uh, 
And if, if you liked the event, please subscribe to the, our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, we have a question? Oh, yeah. oh sorry. Trailer? Have you edited on tra uh, trailers, and how do you approach that? Trailer. Um, I did some independent trailer, so um, it's not like you know I did a big movie trailer. But when I did the white space, also I have to edit the trailer, and that's really you know if if you can hide the ending, that's great. But sometimes you know you don't you are running out of material, you have to tell the whole that the two minutes hold a movie and people complain, but once you bring to the movie theater, who cares, you know? But <laughs> uh, but to be honest, yeah, um, yeah. Tr when I make a trailer, I try to be exciting, took the exciting moment, but still you have to tell the arc of the story and you have to put in the seat what you're getting. You have to hide, well, of course, ending, and you gotta, uh, well, actually I did only action Trailer, so I can not tell that the drummer trailer, but your job is yeah, make audience exciting in two minutes or one minute half, and make sure again back to the tell the story, but don't tell till end, just stop till people oh, I want to see more, and probably that's more like an experience you have to <coughs> uh, practice because you know you have a certain skill set which part you can stop or you can go on. And also, uh, music is important. And if it's an uh, independent or like a low budget movie, you can use like an artist or some like, you know, uh, you know, a website music free. You can use that in practice, but don't use too much. People are gonna recognize that music from the, uh, uh, you know, website. So sometimes I'm gonna mix the music. So if you know the beat, you can cut this music and that music and make new, like a, it's a little bit different style, but demo reel, I mix like a four or five music to make one. But as long as you understand that the music uh, expression, what music talking about, <coughs> then you can use that the music as your uh, additional essence to you know make it happen. So, um, when you make a trailer, for my experience, yeah, music is a very important asset, but also just make sure to understanding that the movie, what you're gonna edit the trailer, then make sure you completely understand what is your, uh, you know, uh, take out, don't, you know, don't show all of it, but you have to find the right moment to stop and mm -hmm. let audience to discover in the movie theater or Netflix, you know, so. so Different beast. Yeah, different Did beast. that help? But uh, there's a lot of, yeah, trailer editor exists, and, you know, they have a dedicate, you know, uh, group and company, mm -hmm. and they have a trend. So keep watching the trend and, you know, mimic the trend. It might be good. Yeah. And uh, I think Trailer House or something like that. Yeah. They have a very specific, you know, style. So maybe you can go intern or something there and, you know. Yeah, a friend of there. mine, that, that's his company, is uh, they produce trailers, so. And also there's a technique to uh, make a music fade away, mm -hmm. like ringing out or something like a, it's more like an editing technique to, you know, you can cut it music and you can put the reverb and, you know, that's really more technical stuff, but, you know, once you know the beat, you can manipulate the music pretty quite well. So mm -hmm. practice that uh, music beat is very good for become a trailer and listen to the music and understanding that uh, what's the meaning of the music and that's give you an advantage when you edit the trailer. Thank you. Any more? You good? All right, so um, I, I'm gonna re-wrap up. Uh, so please subscribe to the, our YouTube channel, follow us on social media. Uh, check our uh, online calendar here at the Los Angeles Film School for events. Uh, we have these regularly. Um, students, don't forget to check your weekly newsletters. Lots of stuff happening. Um, and thank you again to Yoshio. Well, thank you very much for, for inviting here. me.
Uh, Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.